you keep on saying that um, in your bill, you will help kids. So exactly how are you going to help kids? With what, therapy, what the help? With therapy. You know, we want to treat these children, and a lot of them have underlying reasons, um, underlying problems. You know, in the medical field, if you have an infection and that infection gets so bad, you become septic where that, where that infection has spread to your bloodstream. And so doctors don't just start throwing antibiotics or medicine at you. They find the root cause of that infection. And so the root cause of a lot of this gender dysphoria is abuse, sexual abuse, depression, anxiety, um, different things like autism or uh, obsessive compulsive disorders, social contagions. There's all kinds of root causes that we need better therapy to get to the basis of. I will always agree on therapy because I believe that therapy is needed for everybody. But I do not believe that comparing um, these kids who believe that that they're not they're not in the right body. I, I do not believe uh, comparing them to an infection. Um, and I do not think that they have a whole bunch of the underlining diseases that you've just said. Uh, I investigated child abuse and neglect for a really long time. I'm a licensed master social worker. Like this is my background. So I'm telling you that trauma is not indicative of 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 having um, a different gender identity like that. That's not interchangeable. That is not something. There's right. not direct correlation there. But is that being thoroughly evaluated when they treat them? When they do they go through psychological evaluations? Time, they go one time and then they get referred to the gender clinic. Okay. So are you aware of any therapy that happens prior to that? Do you not think that parents I've heard are... stories right here in Missouri where they're okay. not. They go okay. to a counselor with confusion and they're uh -huh. automatically referred are, to a gender clinic. Are, are you in those therapy sessions? No, and it, okay. and and we're not allowed to know what happens. Right, because those are confidential. Right, they're right. private. Okay. Confidential, because those are confidential. Oh, boy. All right, that was a clip of, oh, my gosh, a Missouri State uh, Representative, Pollock, Republican, of course, presenting her anti-trans Save Adolescents from Experimentation Bill, saying youth questioning their gender is like a an infection that becomes septic and that autism may be an underlying cause? I'm confused. What's the underlying cause here? All right. This is just one of the many examples of the right wing's total uh, brain. I don't even know what, what's going on. I don't, I, I don't know if any of these people actually believe it or they just realize that they need a culture war to win um, and to go after folks uh, of, of, of any type. And maybe, you know, in some cases, it's it's a one-two punch. Go after people's health care. Um, of course, uh, put the trans community in danger. Uh, you know, make conservative, make make a the parents more conservative. I don't know. They've got a lot of strategies. Of course, taking on education. You're watching it. It's happening all over the country. This is a movement now by the right. Aaron Reed uh, tracks anti-trans legislation all over the country and runs the largest trans healthcare map. Uh, an informed consent map listing every informed consent hormone therapy clinic for trans people. Uh, and you can, can you go check out Aaron's TikTok at Aaron in the morn. Aaron, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And yeah, that was, um, like you mentioned, that was Representative Pollock. And at that same hearing later on, just like a few minutes later, they brought on a witness who was actually a conversion therapist. And they asked her how she would treat the trans kids in Missouri and conversion therapy was their go-to. Like she had I mean, stated I, that. I can't even at this point, like it's pretty ridiculous. This is insane. Okay. So let's, let's just start off with you. Um, you have this map. What, what, when did you start it? How do you go about tracking? Cause I imagine, you know, some of these efforts are underway kind of behind the scenes before they go public. So, so how, how do you go about this process? Are you are you referring to the, yes, the informed consent map. map right here? Yes. And so um, three years ago, whenever I originally transitioned, I had heard that there was something called informed consent HRT clinics. These are clinics that you can go to um, that are not gate kept behind two years of therapy, real life experience, basically how they used to do things with transition about two years ago. Uh, because not everybody can afford to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on therapy before they're allowed to transition and obtain their hormones. 
the thing is, is that these clinics were not in a centralized repository or one place. A lot of times they're just word of mouth. So you go on Reddit, you go on um, forums that are on the internet, you look for resources that are put out by local organizations that list them, but they weren't put in one place. And so um, about a year after my transition, I'd realized that like I had to do a lot of searching to find my map or to find my mm -hmm. location that I go to. And so I figured I would just spend some time and like go through and all of these resources, put them on a Google Maps and, and just share it publicly. So after sharing it publicly, um, a lot of people were, they started giving their own clinics and it became kind of a community resource rather than just something that I put in there. And it's just become this large list of like 800 clinics. It's been viewed, I think, 2.2 million times. This is incredible. It really is an incredible amount of research. Um, so, I, you know, you track the legislation, the right wing, uh, the attacks on on the trans community. We hear almost every day, like a new bill comes out, a new hearing, a new tweet. Is there a sense at this point how many um, bills are are in the works? Uh, okay, you do. You have that. Yeah. So th there's a lot of numbers out there because the thing is, is that these bills are being brought up every day. They're dying right. every day. And then there are some from the previous year that kind of can still be considered alive right now. Numbers that I hear range between 150 and 250 bills, um, mm -hmm. the most in the history of the United States in terms of anti-LGBT legislation. And you're right. They are popping up every day. Um, I think that like right now you played the one from the Missouri hearing. That one is currently in the stables like it may be about to go to the um to the senate and to the house of missouri and pass it um there was you know a pronoun bill that popped up in tennessee recently that would have given um people uh, teachers in tennessee the right to misgender your students but only if you're transgender so like you, they couldn't misgender a cisgender student it's literally just directed at trans students um you know there are bills that are popping up in alabama just passed or passed one recently where they so this was crazy they, they just had one bill and it was a bill to detransition trans youth which passed in alabama however they then substituted another bill to become a bathroom ban um so trans people that are in schools as well as teachers can't go to the restroom of their gender identity and then added to that at the last minute a don't say gay bill so you know they they just kind of like they're putting everything together everything and they're and then abortion they're bans too forward. there's just this list is like yeah. everything on top of it like and, and I'm glad, I'm glad that you mentioned abortion bans because the thing is, is that the same organizations that are going after, you know, transgender and LGBT people are the same ones that are going after uh, abortion. And so, you know, you have ALEC, uh, the American Legislative Exchange Council, ADF, the Alliance Defending Freedom, both of them are pushing these laws. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because that, that was where I wanted to go is who are, the messaging is like, Almost, you know, it's not just like, oh, Tucker Carlson says it on TV and then everybody mimics it or Laura Ingram or whoever. Um, it really does seem to be like they have there's there's lawmakers all over the country who have a set of talking points, may not even understand how to defend them, as we just saw. Um, but it's coming from somewhere where Alec is is an incredible uh, tool for the right wing to spread and and the Koch brothers to spread their agenda um, in, in especially using culture wars now. But do you know, like, where the is this coming out of the Heritage Foundation? Is there like a specific group that has lobbied very hard to make trans issues the um, the big culture issue of our time? I mean, culture. I'm saying in their terms, not ours. It's a human rights issue, in, in my perspective. Um, do you think that is there like one group that was really behind this that felt like this is where they had to go? So it's weird. It, this is this is it's there's a web and there's it's it's a pretty big network of groups that are involved. But the two that you always hear are like I just mentioned, ALEC and ADF, the Alliance Defending Freedom. Alliance Defending Freedom, their hands are in everything. And the thing is, is that um, they actually have. It's a very strange sort of cross pollination with the United Kingdom's wave of. Um, trans exclusion, trans exclusionary mm -hmm. radical feminism, so turfism in the United Kingdom, and so they're borrowing some of the things that are coming from there. And they're actually, it's really strange, but they're actually financially donating to groups like the Women's um, mm -hmm. Wolf, the Women's Liberation Front. And these are these are people who, on on their face, you know, if you just look at their mission statements and such, you wouldn't imagine that they would be fitting with each other because you know ADF is 
in favor of banning abortion and has lobbied for SB8 in Texas, whereas Wolf has been, you know, they're, they're ostensibly a feminist organization. However, you know, they're getting money and they're using the same arguments and they're actually creating resources together. Like they've, they've branded understanding gender dysphoria in children, like this guidebook, and it has ADF branding and it's got like Wolf branding. And it's just the strangest thing to see with one another. Do we have a sense of the funding? Like, are there a group of donors that seem to be pushing this through these different organizations? The funding is really dark, you know, and yeah. I don't, I have not researched too much into the funding. Um, I know that it's hard to get a grasp for who is giving the money to ADF and, and all these other organizations that are out there. Um, and they they don't really report a lot on this stuff. Um, in terms of polling, I, I, you know, Fox News and the right wing can make issues a thing. And suddenly, you know, like now everyone's talking about pedophilia, I, oh God. <sighs> which is the groomer stuff has been pretty intense. Yeah. So is it I feel like Democrats or progressive well, Democrats in particular, like center Dems will pull something before they champion it. I feel like the far right invents something and then makes it makes the polls move. Have have you seen in terms of polling, um, say ten years ago when I don't even know when did the first uh, the, the the trans bathroom bills when did when did those uh, 2015 ish that twenty fifteen not even yeah. that long give or take um, yeah. was that the first big issue that was you know it was national? it was and there was a clear blow up against that issue at the time. Um, you had a lot of organizations that pulled out of North Carolina. Uh, which ended up sinking that bill. They pulled back pretty heavily. Hmm. On the left, there is a strong sense of caring for yeah. these issues. However, there hasn't been a like a well-sustained pushback among Democrats for these bills. Do you think there's um do you think it's because they realize they can win on the right and they can go to war with Democrats and, and basically push them into fighting these issues that they've invented because they have control of the legislature, because it's like, oh, here's how we, I'm, and this is the most ruthless way as a, as a Republican you know, strategist might be thinking, well, Republicans are going to do whatever we want them to do no matter what, even if they care about it or don't. But Democrats care about this, so let's go after them on this, have them uh, use their resources, and in the meantime, we can chip away at the rights of of you know, trans people, uh, women who are seeking abortions. And and in the case of CRT, you know, you've got people of color and teachers. <laughs> so let's just go for them all at once. Totally, totally. Absolutely. And that that's 100% part of it. But I don't think that it's the whole story because in states where they're, they have a massive majority, so we're talking like my state of Maryland or uh, Hawaii, there are these bills um, that would offer equal health care protections, for instance, to transgender people. And in Maryland, the bill got spiked at the last moment. In Hawaii, which is literally 24 Democrat, one Republican, there is currently a health care bill that, if passed, would make life so much better and so much easier for the trans people in Hawaii. And that bill is currently sitting in conference committee. It's been delayed twice right now at this moment. I think they're probably going to be discussing it. And I mean, I don't want to see that bill get spiked either. So, I mean, yes, I think that that's part of it. But I think even in places where we ostensibly have a lot of allies, we still need help. We still need those bills mm -hmm. to pass. We still need people to act at home. And I wonder, is this, is this because maybe there's Democrats who think that there are more culturally conservative Democrats that they need to win still? Very possibly, but like 24 to one, like you can pass that yeah. and still get rid of like half of your Democrats and still, on, whereas in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, you know, we see a poll like the civics poll that shows 72% of Democrats find transgender issues to be important to them. Like I, even in, even in places where they're not going to risk anything, like there's no risk, we can't get the bills passed. And so I think that there is an issue of having spoken to some of the um, the people doing the work on the ground, a lot of Democrats are simply uncomfortable. A lot of legislators are simply uncomfortable with trans topics. Like they, I've, I've spoken to them and like, they've talked about how going to these legislators, speaking to them, you know, they've got to work through a lot of really basic questions and a lot of uncomfortable moments. And they still get the response of, you know, the kind of response you'd expect sometimes from Republicans where they're just like, I just don't know how I feel about this, that kind of stuff. 
<laughs> a lot of education still left. So a lot of education you, to be done. Seriously. A lot. And and I learned something. I, you know, I've 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 seen some stories on TikTok, um, especially just how difficult a day in the life of someone who's trans is because of a lot of the legislation, because of a lot of ridiculous rules. Um let's play this clip of the airport. Sure, sure. <laughs> I know you're like, oh, yeah, I know. I'm like, what? <laughs> Let's play this clip. If you're cisgender, did you know that most transgender people have to arrive to the airport 15 minutes earlier than you in order to get there at the same time? This is just one of many time taxes that apply to being trans. If you don't understand, I'll explain. Airport body scanners are built under the assumption that your anatomy matches your gender presentation. So when it doesn't, it's going to think that you're smuggling a bomb. Watch this. The TSA officer will press a button designating a gender based on how you present yourself, male or female. TS so this is clearly pretty ridiculous, but this is what a lot of transgender people have to go through when they go to the airport. And in fact, if you read the TSA guidance for transgender people, it literally says to get there early. So recently, the federal government said that they would change these machines. However, Lauren Boebert just filed a bill to block those changes. It really sucks to know that there's an entire political party dedicated to making life harder for trans people. So this is like my, this, the time tax is incredible. Um, Aaron, what other examples do you have of, of how your life is just like more inconvenient and difficult because part, I mean, obviously there's legislation like Lauren Boebert wanting to block any sort of uh, basic switch. I mean, like, like, like that's not difficult for TSA to do. They don't care. But Lauren Boebert's like, no, I'm going to punish you. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's 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 not a huge deal to change these machines and the algorithms. I actually have spoken to some of the programmers. One of the programmers that's involved is transgender herself. And so um, wow. that's, you know, it's, it's not it's not a huge deal, but they, they're, they're still trying to block it. And there's no policy objective that that serves. It literally is just designed to make life harder. But there there are like a lot of other things that people might take for granted that end up taking a whole lot longer just because, you know, my gender identity doesn't match what I was assigned at birth. So um, my birth certificate is a huge deal. Like my birth certificate having my dead name on it and having my um, old gender on it. Anytime that like I need to prove that I am my son's parent and I have my driver's license as my current name, um, but you know, like I have to show on his birth certificate and it's got my old name on it. I have to then like bring, bring out my name change documents, bring out like a whole lot of other things. Um, same with like my passport. So, you know, I, I have to, I'm trying to get my passport right now. And in order to do that, you have to send in your birth certificate, which is pretty trivial for a lot of people, but because my birth certificate doesn't match my current name, I've got to also send in a lot of other stuff and I got to gather them from different places which also then costs money. And a lot of times, you know, it'd be a lot easier if I could just send in my birth certificate. Like that would that'd be so much easier. But because I'm from Louisiana, the mm -hmm. uh, policies around changing your birth certificate are very difficult. And and so in order for me to change my name and my birth certificate, being from Louisiana, I have to fly out to Louisiana. Um, I, got, I have to appear in front of a judge in my home county, uh, oh, which man. my home county is like an 87% Trump county and judges are elected and so oh it's it's gonna be a rough like deal and i'm gonna do it like i'm it's i'm planning on it and i'm, I'm gonna be i'm working on making those reservations COVID, COVID kind of slowed things down for me on that front um but yeah like it's there there's all kinds of things that you know you just kind of run into and and in terms of voting are there any issues i mean we we know how republicans love to go after any sort of uh a uh, person that does not fit their, <laughs> their white supremacist like dreamscape um, in terms of voting, but specifically, you know, marginalized communities and people of color. Given that, I mean, there are voter ID laws that exist in many parts of the country now. Does that affect your ability? Oh, totally. To vote or I mean, because, you know, like I, I know that a lot of times trans people might be stuck filing like a provisional ballot or something because of the fact that their driver's license doesn't match their birth certificate, which doesn't match what they have on file at the voting place. And if you move from one state to another state and you still have your old state driver's license, like there's all kinds of issues. I know that for instance, college students can vote where, where they go to college at, 
but college students like somebody in a red state that comes from Maryland where you can change your gender and your driver's license by attestation might then go to like Nebraska or something where they have different laws around that. And so if they try to go and vote and they present their voter ID, the voter ID doesn't match, you know, the records, then, you know, things can, things can get really messy. And we take all this stuff so much for granted. Um, and, and this is why I think your work is so powerful and that you're informing people and really pulling back the curtain so folks understand just how many of these laws are across the country. Um, also providing information for the trans community in that um, you have this incredible map that you've been working on for a few years now, but also just like your TikTok. It's, it's, it's really like, this is how you take action. This is what's happening. Did you know this? Um, it's really incredibly informative and I would love to have you back on to talk more. I know that this issue, <laughs> the Republicans are just going to keep going. Um, so it's not going to end. There's <laughs> <laughs> more to fight on. Um, before we wrap, who, uh, is there like, I know it's happening all over the country, but is there like one state or and maybe like one representative um, that we should really keep our eye on? Um, right now, I think that the big, oh God, it's, there, there are a few, like even, even narrowing it down to one. Okay, so for instance, um, right now, Texas, Greg Abbott and, and Paxton, child abuse, they're trying to enforce being trans as child abuse, but also in Florida with um, the governor of Florida just releasing a guidance that says that youth should be banned from social transition. And that's the next big scary one that I see. Uh, this goes beyond just like hormone therapy or anything. This is like literally telling kids that they can't present as anything other than their gender at birth. And, and what does that even mean? Like, like haircuts, I, I, like, they're, yeah. like, that's all it is. Haircuts and clothes and pronouns, like for most And how do you use it? Is that a kilt? Like, is that, does that count? No, I don't know. Right, right. Who, exactly. Who right. It's dumb. Are you going to go after Harry Styles? Like, what? I don't know. <laughs> right. All right. Aaron Reed, it's absurd, but it's dangerous. That's why the Republicans are so scary. It seems so ridiculous, except they're actually accomplishing these things. Yep. Um, dystopian times that we live in. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, really, really fascinating conversation. Anything. Go check out Aaron in the morn, uh, Twitter and, and TikTok. And of course, we've got the links um, for the map up there and the resources that you've provided. Really appreciate you joining us for Friend Friday and hope to have you back again soon. Totally. Thank you for having me. We live in crazy times where the tech giants seem to want to own every single part of our lives, literally our data. They want to own how we're able to make money. Do you remember the days when you could post something on YouTube and then it would like fall, you know, it would lead you to another amazing YouTube show. And then uh, you'd, I remember I was thinking about this the other day. I was on YouTube and I, I found all these like amazing actors putting together their own shows and they were so funny. Yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. That is not what YouTube is anymore. We're not in the era where you can just explode and make millions of dollars on YouTube overnight unless you're really boosted. No, nope, we are in the era where it's gotta be word of mouth and community driven. Patreon has really kept us going and we are so incredibly grateful to our existing patrons. Uh, go to patreon.com slash the Nomi Key Show, starting off at $5, all different levels. We've got swag, we've got mugs, we've got bags. 